It seems like we can't go a week without some sort of mid tower with a power supply shroud entering the market. And that's been true for a while now. So I'd still argue that NZXT sort of revitalized this trend with the H440 and then the S340, which is the smaller version of the H440. But that trend has been continued this year, especially with Corsair, their 400C, which we've reviewed. The Fantex Eclipse P400 reviewed, didn't quite like it, but it is a product that exists. And now we're looking at the Rosewell Gungnir, and soon after this, we'll likely be looking at the Silverstone RL05B. All of these cases I just named have a very similar design approach, and that's a mid-tower, most of them without a five and a quarter bay, though this one does have a five and a quarter bay, and power supply shrouds. That is the overarching trend for the current iteration of mid-tower cases on market. The market stack up is pretty tightly packed. The S340 is available between $60 and $70. Corsair's 400C is around $90 to $100. And the Fantex P400 ranges from $60 to $90, depending on how many options you want to add. Rosewell's new Gungnir case, the one we're looking at today, is priced at $65 currently, available through Newegg, which is its parent company. And despite being sort of a store brand of Newegg, Rosewell has put out legitimately good cases over the past few years. The Rosewell R5, for instance, was one of our favorite budget mid-towers of its time. The new Gungnir case is clearly taking a stab at the current metagame of mid-towers in the market, made obvious by its power supply shroud, its somewhat compact form factor, and lack of main compartment hard drive cages. The Gungnir does stray from its competition slightly by adding five and a quarter inch bays, potentially giving it a standout point in the market, but Silverstone's RL05 will soon compete with the same feature set at a marginally lower price, so Rosewell's got a limited window here to get their gung deer out there. It's definitely a tough market, and the 5.25 inch bays really won't be enough to make it stand out, especially not in the US, where there's sort of an ongoing move away from internal optical drives, as you all know. But let's walk through the rest of the case and see if it stands out in any other noteworthy ways. Starting outside, Rosewell's Gungnir uses three different colors of black paint. Definitely an oversight on their part. They've got one type on this top metal panel, one type of black paint on the plastic panel, also on the top, and one type on the front of the plastic panel that's glossy. So three different, completely different colors. You can actually see the difference pretty well in the correct lighting scenarios. And then they've got a red accent going around the outside with the sort of weird thing on the front, the design, whatever that is. So they've got this mixed kind of confusing aesthetic going on with the new Gungnir case. And the black paint is a problem that we've, we've seen with white paint and with black paint, both of them in particular, with manufacturers who alternate between plastic and metal panels, as this does here. And that alternation does mean that the the tone of the black or the white will change between plastic and metal, and so they have to account for that in the design process when selecting different paints. And that's not really to mention its front-facing design. I'm not quite sure what the extruded plastic is supposed to resemble, but it looks kind of like someone took the pen tool in Photoshop and tried to learn how to use it. Had Rosewell gone for a more edgy look or a more curved look, it makes sense as an attempt to maybe appeal to a certain market, like the younger crowd of system builders, who kind of like that more standout look like the Wolf Alloy has, which might not appeal to all of us, but certainly does have a segment. With the way the Gungnir did it though, it just kind of looks tasteless and oddly mixed between uh, an attempt at grace and an attempt at edginess. I will give credit where it's due though. The front panel has marginally more airflow potential than the Fantex P400, which isn't saying a whole lot because the P400 is pretty bad, but the Rosewell Gungnir is at least grilled on the left side, and that's reasonable. It's grilled a little bit on the right side, though the plastic's a bit too thick to be realistically useful in most cases. And the company could further improve on this by reducing the thickness of its plastic bars substantially on both the left and the right, and the top panel uh, could also use some improvements, but it does deserve credit for its magnetic dust filter, which is somewhat of a hot trend right now between Corsair and all the other manufacturers, Fantex included, and that is something that I do like about the Rosewell Gungnir. Time to look at the inside of the case. The Rosewell Gungnir differs a little bit from other cases in its class, but overall it's pretty comparable to the existing models out there from other manufacturers like the S340 and the Fantex P400, and again the Corsair 400C. The PSU shroud takes an industrial approach to its design, complete with a random screw in the middle of nowhere to hold the underside cage in place. The shroud stops just short of full coverage of the bottom third of the case. This is to theoretically allow enough clearance for the two front fans or a radiator maybe, but we think Rosewell could have executed it in a much cleaner fashion. For example, had Rosewell axed the five and a quarter drives, 
the shroud could fully extend and the fans could actually move upward, which would improve the cooling performance definitely and would also allow for a more full side panel window, which is, uh, it's, it's just short of looking cool. It kind of, I don't like really the way the, the side panel window truncates itself right now. We've actually got plans to sort of fix the Gungnir in a future video, but that's still forthcoming. In the meantime, a couple other points of improvement. The shroud suffers from the same clearance issues that the Fantax P400 did. It's got issues fitting some PSUs into the rear panel, and they have to be installed with great patience and at a slight angle to avoid scraping the paint off the PSU in some spots. And that's applicable with the larger PSUs, certainly, but there's still ATX form factor, and Rosewill's spec sheet definitely lists ATX form factor PSUs as supported. And then there's the matter of cabling. So while we're back here in the power supply area looking at the cabling, Rosewell has taken a unique approach to cabling that could actually be cool, but it's poorly executed. And they get routed through the backside of the tray, which is fairly standard, but instead of feeding through holes in the motherboard tray, they feed out of a side panel wall. And that's definitely an interesting approach. It could work out brilliantly with motherboards that have a right angle 24 pin header. Unfortunately, Rosewell doesn't offer enough clearance, so overlapping cables are a severe inhibitor to the side panel's ability to close. Rosewell needs about 10 millimeters of extra clearance here as a minimum to help out. It's also too tight to make changes once the PSU is in there, so if you want to add a cable later, the whole thing has to come out and really best just to get all the cables pre-installed and pre-routed for future upgrades. Now, a couple of good points here. There is a fan hub on the rear side of the tray, so that's definitely something I like. There's a three-speed fan controller on the top of the front panel, but unfortunately the front panel, the way it's attached to the chassis, it's actually got the PCB for all the front I.O attached to the plastic front panel and that means that when you pull it out it's got the cables attached so there's not a good way to separate everything and that is an old approach to the design that i'm really surprised is still being used normally what modern cases do is they'll have those usb and io cutouts in the top panel and then just mount that to the chassis the frame itself and that allows you to remove both the top and the front panel without having the cabling and the pcb attached which is of course a bit hazardous to the, the cables and things like that. The other thing that Rosewell did actually do a bit well was the top of the power supply shroud has a cutout for the PCIe cables, something that I like a lot, and that allows direct management of the PCIe cables. Unfortunately, it also is there as a means to sort of mitigate the lack of pass-throughs in the bottom of the motherboard tray, so you can't really pass through the front I.O. out the, the underside of the tray and into the correct pinouts on the motherboard in a concealed fashion, and that's because there are no cutouts there for it. So if you've got to route them either through the middle of the case where they're very visible, or if they're long enough, you can try and force it through the power supply shroud to get to your motherboard from there. As we recently showed in our thermal chamber validation, our thermal tests are almost perfectly accurate when it comes to PC hardware and cases, and test methodology is described in the article linked below if you want to learn more about that. The Gongnir performed marginally better than the P400 in both CPU and GPU peak thermal performance charts, and the Gungnir sits at 42.41 Celsius load for the CPU and 58.77 Celsius load for the GPU thermals. If Rosewell modified their front panel with our suggestions, we're pretty confident that the temperatures would plant the case definitely ahead of the S340 and potentially even the 400C, but then you're basically redesigning the front of the case, so definitely not a great measurement of the thermal success. The case has a few good ideas, but none of them are really developed properly or to their full potential, and that's definitely disappointing in terms of the case's viability on market. Right now, they've got a few problems with the design. The paint colors are mismatched, which is really just plainly an oversight. And then the front panel, I really don't know what's going on there. If you like it, then great. Uh, that's all subjective, but I do not. So the front panel, the paint colors are somewhat problematic. More problematic, though, is that the interior is actually difficult to build with, and that is in spite of the power supply shroud, which should make it easier, especially with cabling. But cabling is not at all easy, and closing the back side panel or the, the right side panel is somewhat difficult with the way that the cables end up stacking on top of each other and the fact that there's really no clearance there at all or any kind of cutout or stamp out in the side panel to allow that extra space for cabling. The end conclusion here is that really I could waffle between the few good things that were done right and the things that were done wrong with the case and find a middle ground, but in this instance I will plainly just say that I would not buy this case. The competition is far too good on the market. The S340 is very similarly priced. If you really need optical drives, the forthcoming RL05 from Silverstone is a bit better designed, though we haven't fully officially reviewed it yet, 
and that does have the optical drives. If you don't need them, the S340, the P400 even, and the 400C are better options, though the 400C, to be fair, is a bit more expensive. So maybe if it drops to $50, I would consider it as a purchase because that market is a bit easier to get into with this kind of quality, but there's still fierce competition there between Corsair and Silverstone alike at the $40 to $50 price range. If anyone from Rosewell is watching this video, I would encourage you to look through the archives and look at the R5, because that was a case that Rosewell actually did really well. They were ahead of their time with the R5. The pull-out dust filters were really nicely actuated, and the, the mechanics of the case were just much better than anything in this case. So that is where I would start for improving design. This case, however, I'd say is a miss, and probably move on to something a bit better at the mid-tower market segment. So that is all for this video. If you like this type of coverage, as always, hit the link in the description below to read more about this case in particular, or hit the Patreon link to help us out directly in the post video, and I will see you all next time.